Mr. Goffman. First, I want to thank you for your years of public uh, service in the Senate and in the executive branch. Um, there is an urgent need to act on climate change and make sure everyone everywhere gets to breathe clean air. And it's more important than ever to have experienced, talented, uh, committed people uh, serving our country. So thank you so much. Um, strong vehicle emission standards will be critical if we want to tackle the climate crisis, cut pollution, save drivers money at the pump, and create jobs to keep moving down the road to a safer, healthier, more affordable future. We need strong rules for light and heavy duty vehicles for model year 2027 and later, and we need to keep our foot on the accelerator. Uh, and that's why Senators Padilla and uh, Representatives Matsui and Clark and I sent a letter to the EPA calling for the rule to be issued and finalized before the end of the year and made as strong as possible. So Mr. Goffman, if confirmed, will you work to swiftly issue and finalize strong vehicle emission standards that protect public health, the climate and drivers' budgets with model year 2027 and beyond, and to get those done before the end of the year? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, right now, we're, we are uh, planning to uh, propose ambitious uh, car and truck standards um, at this point in a matter of weeks. Um, and that puts us on a schedule where, where it's uh, within reach to finalize um, those standards, the, certainly the truck standards, by the end of this year. And our goal is to finalize uh, the car standards as, as soon thereafter as possible. Okay. Well, that's very good news. Thank you. Um, Americans will be able to breathe easier once we confirm a strong head of the Office of Air and Radiation. And I'm pleased that the EPA is currently strengthening the National Ambient Air Quality Standards, which keeps smog out of our air and out of our lungs. Uh, Mr. Goffman, um, if confirmed, will you work to update our air quality standards to reflect the most up-to-date science to ensure all communities are protected to the greatest extent possible? Uh, yes, Senator. That that is uh, what we're. Uh, that's what we're committed to doing. That's what Administrator Regan is committed to doing. Excellent. Uh, and in addition to dirty, soot-filled air, environmental justice communities are exposed to multiple sources of pollution, whether it is from factories, power plants, trucking centers, or other high-polluting activities nearby. Black, brown, indigenous, and low-income and rural communities have experience environmental injustice from toxic pollution uh, like lead, arsenic, benzene, and mercury. Any one of these chemicals is an injury. Being hit with uh, multiple uh, uh, chemicals is an insult. Mr. Goffman, if confirmed, will you work to include cumulative impacts in EPA rulemaking and look at how multi-pollutant exposure affects health, well-being, and quality of life? Uh, that's a really uh, a question I really appreciate your asking at this time, Senator Markey, because we're making a sort of agency-wide push to uh, address cumulative impacts. Um, our colleagues uh, in the Office of Research and Development are developing scientific tools to do that. Um, in the Office of Air and Radiation, we're developing a new set of analytic and mapping tools so that when we set, say, toxic air emission standards um, for certain industrial sectors, um, we can find a way to take consideration of the cumulative effects of pollution on the communities that are, might be affected by those standards. Yeah, and I, and I think that's the only smart way of looking at it, how they all interact to create the harm. And as a result, a, a plan can be put together, which ultimately will reduce costs. Uh, on those who are going to have to make the changes because they can see the totality of the th of the issues that they're going to have to deal with. And Mr. Goffman, can you speak more about what activities are covered under the Climate Pollution Reduction Planning Grants and how can el eligible entities make the most of these opportunities? Um, well, that's th thank you. That's a super timely question because I think you probably know that within the last hour or so, we released guidance for states to uh, uh, apply uh, for the purposes of applying for uh, planning grants under that program. 
non-competitive, that's a non-competitive grant program for which all 50 states are eligible up to uh, $3 million per grant. And the purpose of that funding is to give states and localities that states may be working with the ability to sort of uh, plan the next set of investments they want to make or programs they want to uh, put in place and then apply for more extensive resources to implement those plans. And we'll be issuing guidance um, on those implementation grant opportunities later this year. Thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. Yeah.